Hey everybody, I am Ta Custom. On this video, we're going to be doing uh, part two or the embroidery half of the Brother SE400. Uh, so I thought it would be a good idea just to make a iron-on patch um, by doing a machine embroidery and then showing you how to turn that into a patch. So I'm going to skip the intro. We're just going to get started right now. Okay, so we are here at the same sewing machine that we were using in the last video. What you're going to need uh, to set this up is your embroidery harness. You will need your uh, little sewing screwdriver and you will need your embroidery presser foot. So I'm going to show you how to put this all together right now. So the first thing we need to do is on the left side of the machine right here, there's a spot for you to loosen this bolt right here. If you do it enough, I'm just going to make the whole presser foot kind of fall to the bottom. So I'm just going to take this whole thing right here and I'm going to set it aside. We will not need this anymore. Now, <clears throat> this part, if you're, if you're new, might take a second, but you're gonna wanna orient the embroidery foot just like this. Um, so you should be able to squeeze this thing in the back. If you hold that in the back, you're gonna want to put it behind the needle, and then there's a little opening where you're gonna wanna loop it where that bolt is. I just kinda tighten it by hand until I can't tighten it anymore. Then I'm gonna tighten it you don't have to over tighten it, but just so it's nice and snug there. So that is now in place. Okay, so make sure there's no thread up top in your machine um, because we're gonna be using embroidery thread from now on. We will need to wind a new bobbin though, and this is machine embroidery bobbin thread. It makes it a lot easier to deal with machine embroidery, so I'm gonna wind one of these bobbins. All right, I am not gonna do a full tutorial on how to wind a bobbin because we did that in the last video. So if you missed that, please go back and watch the other video. Okay, so I wound my bobbin with uh, machine embroidery bobbin thread. I'm going to put that in. Okay, so now we need to set this machine up for machine embroidery. So the first thing you're going to want to do is turn the machine off. I'm going to slide this canister here off. And I'm going to take my embroidery harness and just slide it in until it clicks. And that's it. So now when I turn the machine back on, it's going to ask me to... Uh, hit OK, and it's going to do a little start test, and now it is ready. Now, for this patch, I've got a piece of black denim here. Uh, denim works great for making patches. Um, so I kind of cut this so this would be a little bit bigger than my hoop. Um, you're going to need a piece of fabric that you're going to use, and you're going to need a little bit of a machine embroidery stabilizer. Now, generally, the thicker the fabric is, the thinner or lighter the stabilizer you want to use. In this case, we're using a tear-away stabilizer, which means when we're done, we can just tear this right off. Otherwise, if you're using a thinner fabric, you're going to want to use um, probably a thicker cutaway fabric that's a lot stronger and will give it more of a permanent feel. So, uh, I like to iron my stabilizer because it likes to kind of bubble like this. So I'm going to iron this really quick. Make sure you iron your fabric first. Now I'm flipping this so it's wrong side up. And this is a trick that my friend Fierce Kittens taught me that use a little bit of basting spray, then put your stabilizer on. It makes it a lot easier to get it in the hoop. The temporary basting spray that's just a very light adhesive. What we're going to do is take the top part of our hoop and then I'm going to make sure that my bottom hoop is nice and loose. I'm going to grab this so that I can feel the stabilizer on the back of my fingers. And then I'm going to set in the top of the hoop and press it all the way up so it's seated. Then press the rest of the hoop down. If you have a lot of big bubbles or puckers in there, um, you might need to rehoop it. Otherwise, you can kind of hold it down with your hand and just lightly stretch the fabric. You don't want it to be over tightened because then you're going to get some ripples in your fabric when it's done. I'm just lightly pulling it so it's nice and flat. I don't want it over tight. Then uh, there's a little screw on the bottom of our hoop. So I'm going to tighten this until. It just feels nice and secure. 
All right, so we're back at our machine. I've got my hooped fabric. Now what I want to do is match up the two prongs on the left side of our embroidery hoop up with the bracket on the harness, and it will click into place. That feels nice and secure. All right, so here is our touchscreen menu for the embroidery machine. Uh, if I start on the top left, these are all the preloaded images, and many of these have several different uh, colors that it's going to ask you to use. Um, so for this particular one of a tree, it starts with mint green. If you hit color check and cycle through, it'll tell you all the different colors you're going to need for that particular embroidery. This one's got eight colors. If I go all the way back and I click on the text one, this one's going to let us type in whatever word or words or monogram that we want. So it's got upper and lowercase letters, large, medium, and small, uh, then the adjust is going to let us map out exactly where we want that to go. Okay, so I'm going to hit the memory card button, and that's going to pull up the one that I want to do for this demo. Now, this is the shield from The Legend of Zelda. So this is going to tell me all the colors I need. When I hit adjust and layout, it's going to load it up on the hoop. I'm going to get to point where I want it to go, so I can tell it where exactly on the fabric. So you can pre-mark the center of your fabric in advance, then line up the center with the needle. Um, if I hit size, uh, it's gonna let me shrink or enlarge it. All right, so now <clears throat> I'm ready to start doing this embroidery. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is take out any, uh, any thread I have up top. Uh, I'm gonna hit the back button on here and it's gonna tell me exactly what color I need to load up. So now it says warm gray, I'm gonna do just gray. Um, so <clears throat> we're gonna thread this for each color as it finishes. Uh, so the first one we do is gray. Uh, so now I've got my thread loaded. I'm gonna lower the presser foot and that won't actually touch the fabric, but it's going to do exactly what we want it to. Now we're ready to go. So the thread's loaded, the bobbin's loaded. Uh, we've got our image ready to go. So now once you press this presser foot down, this button is gonna turn from red to green. All you have to do is hit the green button and it's gonna start. Uh, I like to clip my thread after a few stitches. All right, so machine embroidery takes a while. This will spend a few minutes on the first color. And then when it's finished with the gray, the machine will beep. Then it's going to tell you what color to load in next. And I'll come back when we're ready for that and show you how to do that. All right, so we've got our uh, embroidery is done. This turned out really, really well, and you can see it's nice and shiny. Um, so all I'm gonna do is loosen the hoop just enough where we can pop this out. Pop out. <clears throat> now, because we used a tearaway um, stabilizer, all I have to do to get rid of this is just kind of lightly pull around the edges and very cleanly disappear. So now this is stabilized where the embroidery is and there's no extra stabilizer. All right, now your machine should have come with some embroidery snips. These are very special because the tips of these are nice and round, so they're not going to dig into the fabric. And if you have an embroidery that has jump stitches, that are blocking your design. It's gonna let you get between those threads without cutting through anything. This is a pretty clean embroidery, so there's not a whole lot to clean up. There's a few stitches that you can tell are covering some of the colors. So I'm just gonna go through and clean up all those right now. And then uh, I'm just going to iron this out so that this ring goes away. Excellent, that looks perfect. Um, now, um, 
So if you were just doing this for a garment or a, a bag or something, you'd be done with your panel and you could sew this into whatever. But because we're going to make a patch, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. To make a patch, what I need is just a little piece of this stuff. And this is called fusible webbing with backing. So I need a piece just large enough to cover my embroidery. And it's got paper on the back. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to iron this on and it's going to stick to it. Then we're going to peel the paper off and it's going to make it so that you can iron this side to anything that you want. Just use this tabletop ironing board and I'm going to cover just the area where the embroidery was on the back side. Make sure you do this on the back. And you're going to do <coughs> the kind of rough side against the fabric and the smooth side should be facing you. I'm going to iron this. You don't need to use steam for this. You just need high heat. Okay, that should be good. And <clears throat> uh, I'm going to let this cool before I peel the paper off. I want it to be nice and fixed on there. Uh, but while it's cooling, I can cut out our embroidery. Um, and putting the adhesive on the back first helps because it's going to keep the denim from fraying. Um, there's some other fabrics that won't fray quite as badly, but this should be fine. So I'm just trying to cut as close to the embroidery as I can without cutting any of those stitches because I don't want to ruin what we just did. Excellent. So now we have a uh, field patch that looks terrific, and there's still the paper on the back. Um, so this is cooled off enough where I should be able to very easily off the paper here. So what we're left with now is this real smooth kind of waxy looking back, and what that's going to do is if I put this on top of a piece of fabric and iron it down, it's going to stick to that. So we're going to do the same thing we did before, just on a piece of fabric. Iron it real hot for a little while, but then let it cool before you move it. If you're putting this on a jacket, you're going to want to stitch it down or something like that. In fact, I might want to just sew this onto a garment just to show you guys how it looks. Okay, this is pretty funny. I actually have a pair of uh, green corduroy pants I made about four years ago. We're going to put this patch somewhere on these pants to make them look a little bit more professional. I'm going to open these up. I think I want this to be like, so this is going to be kind of on my, my right hip or on kind of the side of my right leg here if I do this. What I'm going to do is put this right here, make sure my pocket's out of the way. Fabric is nice and flat. There's nothing else underneath here. So what we're going to do is we're going to iron this on just like we did earlier. I'm going to get this nice and hot for a little while. That's going to fuse to my pants. Now, ironing this stuff on isn't permanent. So if you're putting it on a garment or a jacket, you're going to want to stitch it down. So I'm going to iron this on first, then we're going to top stitch around it. Okay, this is cool. So I can tell that it's, it's really on there, but I can already tell that the corners... They're, they're on there, but after, you know, washing this maybe one or two times, it would start getting real loose. So uh, I'm, I'm going to do a little top stitch around this to make sure that this stays here forever. Uh, what we need to do is um, switch our machine back to sewing mode. So on the left side of the harness is a, a little lever. You grab that while you're pulling and it pops right off. Then... Uh, I'm just going to put the can back on there. Uh, I will turn the machine on. Probably good that I'm doing this so I can show you guys how to switch it back again. So on the left side, there's a bolt right here that we're going to loosen. As we loosen it, it's not just going to fall right out. We have to grab it from the top right and kind of pull it towards us while we're loosening it until it comes out. Then you're going to want to take your presser foot for sewing and put it right between that bolt. Now I'm going to lower the foot all the way down so it's just resting on it. And then when I tighten this bolt, it is going to lock that into place so that when I lift it up, it goes right back to normal. Now we're back in sewing mode. 
so now, <coughs> um, what I want to do is use um, a color that we can top stitch around in the silver area so you don't really see those stitches anywhere. Um, I could do black and do where it's black, but I want to get the stitches where it's silver. So I'm going to use the same silver that we use for the outside of that embroidery. Now, I just want to feed my pants through the machine. Make sure that my pocket underneath is not in the way so I don't sew through my pocket. I'm going to start right at the top middle, just as close to the edge as I can. Do a little back stitch to make sure it stays tight. I'm just going to do a straight stitch all the way around this patch. When I get to sharp corners, I will pivot like we did in the last video. Okay, now I'm going to cut my thread and just very carefully feed this out of the machine. And I'm going to iron these so that they look nice and straight so I can show you guys how they look. Okay, we are all done. That was really easy. Uh, so I've got my pants here with a brand new uh, Zelda patch on it, which I think looks really cool. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to make sure I covered the basics of how to embroider on this machine which I think we did a good job of, and I showed you how to make a patch and how to sew it onto uh, a garment, or if you want to use that in a panel for one of your other projects, that is exactly what I do. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this helped you learn how to do exactly uh, what you came here to learn. Um, if there's any other videos you guys want to see, please let me know in the comments. I am back making videos a lot more full time, so um, please uh, subscribe and like these videos if this is something you want me to keep doing. I also stream live on twitch.tv. Uh, I'm a creative broadcaster and I do live sewing streams and it's usually a lot more of me having fun and hanging out with the community uh, and less about education. So the YouTube videos are for teaching and the Twitch streams are for having fun and hanging out with people. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next video.